Hi, Steve Hayes here. Steve Hayes here. I want to talk about a new book just out, Pro Socials, by myself, Paul Atkins, and David Sloan Wilson. And it's about how to combine the science of psychological flexibility with Lena Ostrom's Nobel Prize winning set of design principles for how to create cooperation, pro sociality, and small groups. This is something that is like picture made. I mean, it's just like dialed in for BCBA's behavior analysts. But for one thing, most behavior analysts I know, they're dealing with small groups all the time in their businesses, but also in the school work they're doing, the, the family work they're doing, and so forth. And the principles that Lynn Ostrom won the Nobel for is how you can create uh, uh, cooperation uh, in small groups. Now, the other reason why it's dialed in, in my opinion, is that uh, we have as part of our normal kind of role as BCBA is doing organizational or, or, or small group work. We're looking for principles that are natural science based. We're not particularly interested in principles that are woo woo based or too far away from the core contingency thinking that's inside the behavioral tradition. What Lynn Ostrom's put together, what the core design principles are, when you see them, you see like, oh, like, duh, it's like a Homer Simpson moment. Yeah, of course, that would be there, and that would be there, and that would be there in any group that knows how to work together and cooperate. And yet, if you measure them, maybe even in your own company, but if not, if you measure them just in the groups that you work with, you're going to find they exist across a range, and the functioning of the group is directly related to how well that they're intuitively. Almost nobody knows this uh, work for which she won the Nobel. Int intuitively, people are, are putting these things or not putting these things in that it might relate almost directly to how uh, groups succeed. When you know what the principles are, then it's a lot easier to deliberately put them into your company or to put them into the uh, groups that you serve in your educational uh, settings or families and, and, and so on. So what am I talking about as core design principles? Well, there's eight of them and I'm not gonna go through all eight, but I'll give you a kind of an example and you'll probably have that Homer Simpson thing and yet uh, it's not necessarily what you're applying. One is, you, you have to have a clearly defined group that has a clearly defined purpose. Who's in, who's out, and why? what is it about? What are you up to? What are you trying to produce? And with certain kind of things like, you know, who gets access to the water or the fish, you know, it's defined by access to common pool resources. But in lots of our groups, they're voluntary and it's defined more by the values of the group. What are we trying to do together? And so what's in ProSocial is a way of getting clear about our group and individual values and what defines us as a group. What are we really trying to produce? Can we monitor the degree to which we're moving towards what it is that we want to accomplish? Any behavior analyst is going to want to do that. You want to measure and monitor their success. Turns out that's really critical. But can you look also at whether or not the costs and benefits of being in the group are equitable? Are some people getting all the attention, all the money, all the praise? Other people are doing all the work? You've got a problem. Is there a way of making decisions and do people validate that way? It doesn't mean every group is a democracy. It doesn't mean you have to you know, fun function by consensus. But you do have to take the time to see, you know, are we together on this in terms of how we make decisions? And if, if we're not there, then you've got that whole undermining of cooperation that is happening. So if you hire somebody new, for example, in your company, you may have to bring them into how decisions are made here, but also allow them to have a voice about how they might react to that or fit into that or plug into that or tweak that and come to some sort of agreement and revisit that as, you, as the group evolves. If there's a violation of it, if somebody has a role and didn't follow through and something they need to do and didn't do it, is there a way of sort of measuring that and putting consequences on that, positive and negative, but doing it in a graded fashion? 
You don't be, you know, threatening people or taking their head off if they make minor transgressions. And in a similar, similar way, on the positive reinforcement side, you don't dump huge amounts of positive reinforcers on somebody for the smallest little step. You've got to balance these consequences with the behaviors that you see and do it in a way that feels fair and that is uh, incremental and fits the, 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 the magnitude and the importance of the particular behavior that you're looking at. There's others in there that are also important, but I'm just going to give you a feel for it. Does this sound like something a behaviorist could do? Do you think? Yes, it does. Does it sound something like something that might be important? Well, the science says it is important. Uh, when we went through the economic downturn in 2008, David Sloan Wilson did this research, he scored uh, companies on whether or not they implemented the core design principles and how they ran their business. Guess who survived? the economic downturn in a way that produced prosperity in their business. It's the ones who are intuitively were applying to core design principles. So there's a technology for how to do it. There's a how to do kind of step-by-step -step guide that's in this book and in our training programs that are out there. And uh, avail yourself of it because you can do it right inside your scope of practice. This isn't anything that anyone's going to say, oh, behavior analysts can't do that. No, you can do this as a BCBA and it's going to give you ways forward that will help you not just with the people you serve, but also even in your own practice so that you can serve people in that way. That's true of the psychological flexibility work. That's why it's in pro-social. And it's true also of the core design principles that Lynn Ostrom developed. Uh, she won the Nobel Forum for a darn good reason. They're really powerful. They work. They're science-based. And so why not borrow? You know, paper analysis keeps moving on. It's new. It has an edge. And, you know, Skinner's last sentence the night before he died was that variation selection is important to behavior analysis. I think it is. And if you agree, take the baton that he passed, pick it up, and carry it forward using evolutionarily sensible principles uh, to do the job that we came here to do uh, with the individuals and the groups that we serve. Hope it's useful to you.